Ontario is Canada's second largest province. At more than 1 million square kilometers, it's bigger than France and Spain combined. And if there's one place in the world renowned for its abundance of clean, fresh water, it's Ontario. In fact, our more than 250,000 lakes contain about one-fifth of the entire planet's fresh water. It's precious to us, and it's important that we protect it. That's why the stone, sand and gravel industry needs to be, and is, a responsible steward of our water. I think people are surprised by the way water is responsibly used in quarries. We look for locations, rock sites, that will give us good quality limestone without the need to handle vast amounts of water. It just doesn't make economical sense. Quarrying operation is a, is a mechanical process where we just crush rock. The mechanical process of, of, of digging a hole in your backyard with a shovel is exactly the same environmental impact that we have, except ours is just a little bit larger scale. So a lot of people think that, uh, you know, that there's boatloads of chemicals used in the production of, of uh, aggregates, and it just isn't the case, you know. Water is managed for three main reasons in pits and quarries. Washing the product, dust control, and to create dry work areas. So because we're extracting below the water table, water will accumulate in the area that we create the quarry in. So what happens is water comes in from the different fracture planes. Where we get the most of the water is from precipitation or snow melt that occurs and it coalesces down in the bottom. The, the pit actually is relatively impervious and so the water will collect there. The water that we collect up from the trickling in what happens is we will pool that in a reservoir like this. We move it throughout the pit so that we can get to central locations where we can pump it out. We are really handlers of water. We don't want to consume water. We want to operate under dry conditions. We're more water movers than we are water takers. Uh, we just move the water back to the natural environment. Excess water pumped out of a quarry is very, very clean. That's because the sand and gravel it flows through provides a very effective filtering system. It's a very regulated process that is very highly monitored, making sure there's keeping track of the volume of water you're pumping and the quality of water that is being utilized in the area. The aggregate business may look like it can be a dirty job, but it's one of the cleanest industries there is. Washing the products before we consume them is essential to make them high quality. Luckily, this closed loop process consumes very little water and uses no chemicals. Here's how it works. Step one is to remove the water from the working face area of the quarry. We have a, a ditch which allows the water to flow by gravity to our uh, primary collecting pond. A submersible pump of that pond will move the water to our feed pond, which feeds the, the wash plant. Uh, water is pumped from that pond to the wash plant. The water washes the fine particulate off the aggregates, and then that water is returned back to our, uh, our plant feed pond to wash more aggregates and the process continues. And so the water that you see in these reservoirs could be used, you know, 10, 20, 30, 100 times. All we're doing is just cycling it through so that we can wash our aggregate products. So if you're going to make concrete, you need aggregates to meet certain specs for the, for the concrete quality, right? So it has to be washed material. And it is a misconception that there's some form of chemicals being added to the water through that process, but it really is just washing off um, those natural you know, fine sediments on, on the aggregate. There are other industries that consume a lot more water. Uh, the bottle water industry, soft drinks, they would use a lot more water than the aggregate industry. They're taking, they're consuming where we're more moving. We're keeping a small percent to keep washing aggregates. The rest just keep, we keep passing it through a series of pumps and we get it back into the natural environment. That water that's being re-injected back is actually ensuring that the wetlands around us are not impacted, which is important habitat for certain species. That water is free flowing through the sand and gravel deposit 
very similar to any other aquifer. It's high quality water that uh, is basically just like the glaciers would leave a, a feature, like a, a lake or pond feature as, as well. No doubt about it, pits are dusty places. Big machinery and vehicles can kick up a lot of dirt and a lot of dust, so water is used to keep it to a minimum so it doesn't impact neighbors. Dust control is very important to our operations. We don't want a copious amount of dust leaving the site. We don't want it to negatively impact our neighbors. We have a water truck that's used to control dust on this site. It's all pure groundwater. It comes right out of the ground. We pump it right into a truck, and that truck is used to spread it around the site. This industry is extremely well regulated. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks, local municipalities and conservation authorities require technical studies and constant monitoring on the use of water in pits and quarries. We're a very regulated industry. We have legislation that govern quarry and aggregate work. And therefore amongst them is water management. And we have two really important pieces of, of legislation being the taking of the water, the ingress of water in, and then the egress of water out. And we actually now work very well with all of the agencies, right? So they're a part of this. We have annual meetings with them, we review our data, the data is available for them in real time as well for systems, for pumping, for water quality and, and quantity and everything like that. We strive for that balance between government, between industry, between neighbors, um, and then really fundamentally all you're really trying to do is then ensure that you're not having an impact on human health or the environment. There's absolutely accountability in the process. Any operation that is using water for their operations, uh, they're required to have permits uh, from the Ministry of the Environment and Climate Change. Listen, there are a lot of neighbours that are concerned about, uh, about their water and their wells. Uh, we, we understand that. Uh, the first thing I can unequivocally say is there is going to be no impact to water quality. The cleanest water in the entire Peel water system comes right out of this pit, you know. And the water in very close proximity, right underneath the, the village that's right adjacent to us, had seven wells that were all knocked out by phosphorus contamination, right? But that same water comes down, hits the gravel pit, and the biology in the, in the, in the gravel pit ponds gobbles up those nutrients and neutralizes that bacteria to the point where when that water is filtered back through the gravel deposit into that, into that peel well number three, it's the cleanest water in the entire peel water system. If I had to pick an industry to, to operate next to my municipal well, I want a clean industry. Aggregate is a very clean product. It doesn't contaminate the environment. Ontario is blessed with clean, fresh, abundant water and our stone, sand and gravel operators are doing their part to keep it that way. You know, I'm an environment manager and I try to ensure that we're always doing the right thing. I make sure that we are protecting water. It's vital, right, to, to our communities and we understand that and we do a lot to protect it. So I think if we can kind of get people to be familiar with our industry and familiar with what we do every day, I think they find it a lot less threatening and uh, realize that, hey, this is just a thing, a thing that we need to do and uh, in order to, to keep our keep our society going and to keep a, keep a bright future for our children.